When we got our printer back in 2019, the question came is, what do we print first? And you know, we sat, sat down with the teams, let's print a boat. And they said, a boat? <laughs> we haven't printed anything this small. You want to print a boat? And said, yeah, we do want to print a boat. Why not? Let's see if we can do it. I was pretty confident it would work. Everyone thought I was crazy, which is probably true. Sounded pretty crazy to us. So we drove to Orono, Maine to find out for ourselves. The University of Maine's Advanced Structures and Composite Center is 100,000 square feet of well-measured curiosity, where 260 scientists and a whole lot of students ask big questions and solve bigger problems for NASA, the US military, and 500 plus corporations. It's also home to the world's largest 3D printer, just big enough to print a boat. At the time, I was running a startup across the river from the university, but of course, it was big news. We told the printer supplier that we would like to do that, and they came and said, no, don't, don't, don't try that as the first thing you do. We just, we can't support you if you did that. Often you're starting with a blank sheet of paper and thinking outside the box, and you know, you can't take no for an answer. As soon as the printer was commissioned, we printed it. It was literally the first thing we did, and it worked first time, which is quite amazing, so. Our team did a great job. We started printing on Thursday night at uh, close to 10 o'clock at night, and the team said it would be done between 10 and 10.30 on Sunday night. We're done at 10.15 on Sunday night, and we printed the whole thing in one piece, never stopped a minute. It took 72 hours-ish to print, so it was three full days. I was part of the team. I was doing 12-hour shifts during that period for three days to make it happen. I was amazed, and the guys that worked with me, we had a lot of little 3D printers in our company, and everyone was amazed that something at that scale could be printed. It was the largest ever printed boat, a polymer boat in the world, so we got some Guinness World Records to do that. And now we're trying to build some bigger boats, <laughs> as you might imagine, so. <laughs> and, and some bigger printers. <laughs> so. and a lot of people think we're crazy, and, and, I, and that's okay because that's what, that's what research and development is about. You gotta really look into the future and try some things that nobody's ever tried. So I did grow up in Tampa, Florida, living on a lake with alligators and snakes and all sorts of fun outdoor <laughs> creatures. I had a lot of curiosity and I was very motivated by the environment. I definitely read a lot of books as a kid and was always intrigued by the ability to use science to make the world better and to clean up pollution and to make new and cool products that people could use. We have a special type of 3D printer here that takes pellets and can convert them and print them in the standard 3D process. Standard 3D printing generally uses a petroleum-based plastic feedstock but the team at University of Maine is pursuing a more sustainable solution. The pellets we use can be made from lots of different kinds of materials. So wood flour is filler, nanocellulose is a strengthening aid, and we're trying to utilize resins that were derived from natural products and get a 100% green biorenewable feedstock that can then be converted to use for tooling or objects, houses, boat molds, etc. We're just trying to make them better, cheaper, using less energy, and even bigger. I think my big dream is really to serve the circular economy, take something that comes from nature, use it over its lifetime, and in the end, return it 100% to nature. We're also decreasing the energy and the amount of materials needed to build things that people still need, like housing. So there's a need in Maine alone for close to 20,000 low-income housing units. And these are typically 600 square feet, and they cost close to $200,000 each. Almost a $4 billion market just in Maine alone. So can we do it better by 3D printing the homes? Is it possible? Uh, is it possible to, to reduce the waste at the site? Is it possible to use bio-based materials to print with and that are 100% recyclable? Could we have super insulated homes that, that, that use less energy? Can we build a home that has drop-in panels for solar panels right away so you just plug and play them? And, and, and by doing additive manufacturing, you can actually potentially do all this at the same time. I think the house project is pretty exciting. I mean, there's a lot of people out there 3D printed in housing. You've seen it. It's on all over the news. But I think the ability to really break through with different, they call them sparse structures, the ability to make new types of housing, things that are unique to the different environments that people live in. So really trying to marrying inexpensive, affordable housing, using renewable materials, and really tailoring the design and the structure of the resulting house for the environment that it's in. It can help renew our infrastructure. We do a lot of work on developing new technologies for bridges and other infrastructure projects. 
And if we want to make a composite bridge girder, we can 3D print the mold and make it really fast and test it really fast. I think there'll be a movement towards local manufacturing with this technology because you have a printer that can print anything. So I think we'll see more raw materials being shipped around the country. In Maine, we could be printing lobster boats, and in California, we might be printing surfboards, you know. So I think there's an opportunity to be very versatile. My father started this company about 43 years ago, and uh, I've been lucky enough to run the company for the last five, six years. Our first real voyage as a family, we circumnavigated for three years on a yacht my dad built. When my father started, you're essentially laying up the frames and things like that on a big floor like this. Now it's all computer driven, 3D modeling, CNC cut files, 3D printing, all that. So that's a big shift. Instead of going and, you know, buying a bunch of plywood, uh, Duratec products, you know, a lot of products that go into mold building that essentially get cut up and put in the dumpster. You now can grab these 3D printed molds and then we can essentially go direct to mold. So a normal process, you're going plug to mold. And in this case, you're skipping that plug phase. So you're, you're skipping a whole step of both efficiency and labor, cost, environmental, all that stuff plays into this. If we can keep going with that kind of approach, drive the cost down of these parts and you just start you know, essentially not throwing stuff away. It can be recycled constantly. I've done a few projects with Lyman Morse. They're a great crew down there. And I'm glad to be working with them on the state funded project we have looking at 3D printing tooling to help the boat builders get tools faster and make them recyclable too. We're also looking at bio-based resins where the resin is made from organic material, not from petroleum. When you bring those two together, then you're 3D printing, you know, trees or whatever it comes from. So in that instance, it's fully bio-derived, fully recyclable. That's kind of the holy grail. And we're, we're getting close to doing that. Traditional boat building, especially in Maine, has always been quite innovative. And I think it's about understanding new technologies, not being afraid to try them, and being small enough and agile enough to, to move quickly. I lived overseas a lot when I was a kid. I do remember spending more time in the ocean than on land. Certainly enjoyed spending a lot of time in boats. I never thought I'd be in a situation like we are today where we have this new technology at our fingertips, which is really transformational and applying it to boat building and other industries is, is going to be quite exciting. We get inquiries every day from all walks of life where people want to do something different. People bring new ideas to the table and that inspires us to do different things as well. So it's never a dull day, which is good. What's the craziest thing anyone's ever asked you to print? Apart from a boat, we've had requests for helicopters, planes, trains, all kinds of things. You name it, um, we've had requests for printing it. 